pray for everyone on the prayer list. Um, they all need your prayers, and as usual, you know, we can't go into specifics, but please do look at each of the names and um, place them before God. If there are no other updates, oh, Jeff, right up. I have other announcements. Um, I want to hear from you about choirs, bell choir, adult choir, youth choir. I have mixed feelings about getting together, about adaptations, or different ways we can do it in these times, or if we're not ready yet. Uh, I don't have enough bell ringers yet. I don't have enough singers. So um, I need to hear from you and days of the week, all that stuff. If we're ready to go, if we're ready to, I don't know, sing outside or whatever. So let me know if uh, the kids are interested, if you're interested in singing. And Greta's trying to also fulfill a request that I've made, is, and that is that we would have it. If we didn't have an ongoing Sunday choir or bell choir, that we would at least have enough people together that we could do special music. So if you're willing to practice, say, for special music sometime, or just be part of the choir, please do contact her. Yeah, I want to hear from the soloists, too, if you can provide special music for one Sunday. Yep, we need some soloists, and one of these days I'm going to get Tori to play our guitar. And I don't see her. She's probably working. Did you have an announcement? Yeah. Um, Dr. Lenz, he's one of the providers up in Lycans. He was diagnosed with chronic myeloid leukemia mm -hmm. and has um, what's called graft first host disease um, and now is put on hospice. So, oh. Yeah. Um, what's his first name? Edward. And is it L E N T Z? And how do you know him? I, just... I work with him. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, well, let's prepare our hearts and minds for work. Oh. Stand as you're able for a brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are to sin. God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We will recite Psalm 15 responsively by whole verse. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in the overcame, nor do they take bribes against the first chapter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. 
for they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Here ends this lesson. <laughs> The Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There's nothing outside a person that going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, or lack of self-control, envy, slender, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of our Lord. I'd like to invite the children forward. Good morning. to hold my breath till you come? <laughs> Look at you in your soccer outfit. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. So let's see. I have a question for you. Give me one rule that's in your house. Something you're not allowed to do. Like maybe if you get up and it's still dark, you're not allowed to get out of bed. Got to wait till mom and dad wake up. Let's see. Think of a rule. Or you can't touch the knives. Excellent. I'm telling you, you always give me the answers that I would have given you because they're just perfect. That's a great rule. Can you think of one, Raina? How about, are you allowed to jump on the beds? No, so that would be a rule. How about, are you allowed to have the dog in your bed? Okay, so that's another rule. Okay, then, yeah, so sometimes, so sometimes there are rules that are like, meh, like when you're at um, Grandma Roz's house, are you allowed to run around the swimming pool? 
like run, like chase each other, like play tag. Or, because you might slip, exactly. So rules are there to keep us safe. Then there are other things like laws. They're really important. Like, do you remember when you always had to get in your car seat? Are you still in a car seat? Because sometimes you have, it, it, you have to get bigger sometimes, right? You have to weigh a certain amount. So God gave people rules and laws. And one of the things in the gospel today that they were arguing about was, how come your disciples aren't washing their hands before they eat? Because that's a rule of ours. And Jesus said, well, why are you asking me? I don't think that sounds very nice. And he wanted them to think about what the rule, the purpose of the rules were. And if a rule is a good rule, it keeps everybody safe. Jumping on the, not jumping on the beds isn't just about messing up the covers, is it? What's it about? Exactly. And kids have done that. They broke their arm and stuff like that. So you guys are learning all this stuff. Can you tell me one rule that God has? What's one rule that, God's, that God has given us? Or law, I should say. Because God's... So there's a, here's a difference. God doesn't just give rules. He gives commandments. That means you don't forget it. So one of the rules are not to lie. Did you know that? That that's not just a rule from mom and dad or your teachers? But that's from God. You don't tell stories about somebody that aren't true. Right, that's a whole other story, a lesson that comes from not lying. Very good. Well, I have nothing else to teach you. You guys really understand God's commandments. And pretty soon, I bet you're learning the Ten Commandments. So one of them is to love God as God and not to love anything else as God, right? And then another one is not to kill other people, right? And sometimes that's weird when we have wars because then we kill other people, but we say it's okay, but God still doesn't want us to have wars. But sometimes it's just the way, only way human beings can work things out. So that's that. Can we say a prayer about rules and laws? Dear Lord, I can't hear everybody. <laughs> Thank you for giving us rules to keep us safe. And laws that we, if we break them, will really, really hurt us or someone else. And laws that if we break them, will really hurt us or someone else. Thank you for loving us and caring for us. And thank you for all the other people that do too. Oh, you did so good. Amen. Can I have high fives? Because you did so good. Can I have a high... Can I have a high one? Five? Awesome. Thank you. That was perfect. Knives in the drawer. Don't touch the knives. So, um, in seminary, I discovered that there was a musical group that was made up of Lutherans, and their name was Sin Boldly. I'd never heard that phrase before, and I don't know if it's a good one to have quoted Luther as saying, sin boldly. The concept of unmerited grace has already led other Christians to believe false ideas about Lutherans. To this day, other Christians challenge Luther's suggestion that grace comes freely and covers all. Even Lutherans misunderstand the concepts of grace, law, and gospel. So I'll ask you, do Lutherans rely so heavily on God's grace that they encourage sin? Not in the least. Do we ignore God's law? No way. One beauty of our faith is how Lutherans understand the intent of God's law and that is to keep sin in check and drive us to God. 
So I'm going to explain to you some of the uses of the law. God's law is like a guardrail to sin. It prevents some accidents from becoming fatalities. The law, like a guardrail, can sometimes stop the worst from happening. Harm may come, but tragedy may be prevented or warded off. Rather than plummet over and down the whole length of the mountainside or cross the entire other lane and median strip, you might just wreck your car. Like a guardrail, the, sin, the law controls sin, so it literally does not get out of control, leading to greater harm and destruction. A law like a guardrail is a restraint that attempts to minimize damage and provide structure. It lends itself toward orderly travel and safe operation. Second, the law is like those digital signs they place in construction and residential areas that show your actual driving speed. The law spells out the set speed limit, that number on top, that's most likely below the rate that you drive by. The law shows your actual speed in contrast to the speed you think you're going. So that when we judge others, we even say, well that sign must be reading the car that drove by me just a minute ago. We doubt our certitude and double check ourselves. We look down at our speedometer and say, hmm, I didn't think I was going that fast. The law, like a speed zone sign, shows us what we're doing and convicts us. Like a cop car sitting nearby, a good threat or fear of punishment makes the law enforceable. And last but not least, the law is what governs all things that pertain to drivers and their vehicles. Now this last parallel only works if you don't confuse God's law with the actual Motor Vehicle Administration. I don't know about you, but it's been my experience to find MVAs aggravating and frustrating, even though they, like the law, serve a purpose and originate out of good intention. The law itself is a vehicle that God provides, it allows believers to go places and do things beyond what they otherwise could. Without the law and its commands, people would hitchhike with other gods and walk miles on sore feet. Whoever has received grace so they believe has been united in faith to Christ. And as claimed children of God, we receive vehicle, tags, and license. We're credited with Christ's ability to obey. And in this way, the law helps believers become better drivers, or to say it another way, become more holy. Now, receiving one's license and a car to drive, that is, being justified or saved by grace, doesn't mean there still aren't rules to follow and laws to obey. Faithfulness is a way of life given by God, and through Christ we gain maturity. And maturity helps us appreciate and benefit from God's law. Just like when we learn to drive, we gain freedom by becoming a Christian. The freedom we enjoy is afforded to us, and in order to keep driving, we must obey and submit to the law without resenting its commands. The expectations placed upon us are for our good. And through Christ, even the law becomes a means of transport. For when we practice keeping the law, our skills develop, we develop virtues and build character. By following God's law, we're taken toward holiness every single time we get behind the wheel. We uphold the law because we believe in Christ. 
We trust God's intention and understand that both law and gospel have divine purpose. Law and gospel both have been crafted and created for our sake. Because God knows if dangers did not exist that actually threaten our lives, there would be no need for guardrails, speed signs, or motor vehicles administrations. According to Jesus, what's the difference between rules and laws? This past year, we've all learned the difference between a recommendation and a mandate. We've seen how recommendations are treated as mere suggestions unless something is commanded or mandated. I mean commanded and mandated and enforced. People usually won't comply. Rules are made to be broken, some say, or at least tested to see if they're worth following. That is the American way. Jesus seems to take offense when the rules are pointed out to him. Why? Because whether someone follows the rules or not is a matter of the heart. It's possible that some people who have not been vaccinated truly love their neighbors. And it's also possible that some people who have been vaccinated, don't. See, rule followers don't always care about what's really at stake. And rule breakers sometimes do. Some people like the Pharisees and scribes felt it was their job to notice who did and who didn't follow the rules religiously. Jesus says, some of you abandon God's commandment and hold to human tradition. Like us, the Pharisees and the scribes of Jesus' time were concerned with who thoroughly washed their hands, who washed the things they ate, and followed other, uh, other recommended guidelines that were put forth by tradition. Tradition was the CDC of their time. You see, the law and the CDC are both protection agencies. Each is put into place to save lives and protect people from threats. Granted, God's law deserves our full trust. The other is based on human tradition of scientific elders. Jesus asks, whom can you trust? The wisdom of man or only God? We can trust the word of God to help us discern the wisdom of science. God's children are born by the word. We have the word implanted in us that saves our souls as if we've been vaccinated by God. Then it's up to us to do something. We're to become doers of the word so the word stays in us. Doing God's will and following God's law are booster shots against sin. Whatever else you do will wear off. Coming to church and merely hearing God's word doesn't last. It's like looking at yourself in a mirror before you leave the house. You may feel good in the moment and walk away feeling attractive. The feeling may last but your actual look's gonna deteriorate by the hour. Your hair will mess up. Your glasses will get smudged. You'll get food between your teeth. Your clothing and skin will become soiled regardless of how you feel. And you're no longer actually the person who left the house or God's house hours ago. The text says, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that going in can defile. And I wouldn't dare to say that that is 
pertains to the vaccine because we don't know the answers to everything. But if we concentrate on that which comes out of us, then we'll be doing what Jesus asks us to do. It's one thing to doubt the vaccine for you and your own family, but don't let whatever comes out of your mouth create confusion for someone else. Check your heart. Evil intentions that Jesus mentions come to fruition whenever other people are victimized. That's the danger of fornication, theft, murder, and adultery. The law has a purpose and with freedom comes responsibility. Both the law and freedom offer protection for the vulnerable, for the ignorant, and those unwilling to follow the law. I think Jesus is also saying that wanting others to do as you do is greedy, wicked, and deceitful. Speaking against others involves envy, slander, pride, and folly. All such things come from a dark place in our hearts. They make communities unpure and defile persons. In fact, the purpose of the law is to show that on their own, Persons cannot better themselves. Persons cannot make anyone worse by pointing out their flaws. The purpose of the sermon is not to imply that God's law demands everyone get vaccinated. Because regardless of what pe rules people follow or recommendations they ignore, the purpose of God's law is to reign in sin to show us where we fail and to help us do better each day. A couple weeks ago, two young men on small motorbikes pulled up behind Steve and I at a red light on 13th Street in Harrisburg. As soon as the light changed, they revved their engines and popped wheelies and rode on their back wheels for some distance. Of course, I shook my head in judgment because they were in t-shirts and without helmets. No law could protect them. There are places without guardrails in the world, places where speed limits are not observed and vehicles operate in an unsafe manner. God knows that there's only so much that can be put into place to guide, to convict, and educate. Nonetheless, God also knows that there are thrills that people seek and freedoms they pursue that attempt to work around every recommendation, rule, mandate, and method of controlling human behavior. Without fail, God knows our hearts and whether they're near or far to him. And without fail, Jesus continually desires to teach us. Without fail, he's with everyone. Those who drive without knowledge of the law and those trying to evade it. Those whose vehicles are in great shape and those whose vehicles are in need of repair and those whose vehicles are rusting out, broken windows, flat tires, and all. Let us pray. Lord, we love the freedom that you've afforded us. Being able to drive gets us where we want to go, and some of us rather enjoy it. Others drive because they have to. Help us obey laws put into place for our personal and collective safekeeping. Inspire everyone to appreciate their intent. 
Help us not to confuse human rules or tradition with divine will. Help us believe in you and live from the promise that your word will accomplish your purpose in the lives of all people on earth. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Let us profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit.
made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church, that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, leaders, and participants who hear and echo your expansive, generous, welcome, and ongoing commitment to covenantal relationship. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the whole of creation, that plants and animals have habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations. May nature's environmental laws serve as guide rails, speed reminders, and handbooks. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for individuals in positions of authority with power to influence and affect people's lives. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state, and local governments. Guide them to seek benefit from every person, not only rules that preserve tradition or enforce dominance. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are in need, especially those on our prayer list. Support and encourage the unemployed, underemployed, or impoverished. Bring food, shelter, clothes, and stability for daily life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this conjoined congregation, especially those beginning in a new year or time of life. Students, teachers, young and older adults. Empower teachers and school administrators, doctors, and others that help individuals navigate complex systems. Guide students in their learning and development. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. Lessen the threat lessen the threats and minimize the tension that surrounds gathering indoors. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the faithful departed, especially George Irvin, Sally Snyder, and all who showed us how to honor God with our hearts. Inspire us by their example and renew our faith, trusting that we will unite with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us exchange the sign of peace with each other. This will be our last Sunday for singing this, and then we'll go back to the other for a little while. Ready? Give it your best shot.
Let's pray together using the words of the Lord's Prayer. We'll go ahead and use the same um, benediction from last week. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and always. And also may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ himself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each and all of you. Please join us after the service for some uh, refreshments over there. Someone has baked some goodies they look, that look very good. And again, um, please do pray for everyone that's in your outside cover in the bulletin. There are some people, there are a lot of people there that are really struggling and do need your prayers. So please don't forget them. Thanks for coming to church today. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.